I'm Jane Harmon, the first head of the Woodrow Wilson Center in Washington, D.C., who happens to be a woman. Um, you can applaud. <laughs> you know, it's fine. Um, I'm also a former nine-term Congresswoman, a recovering politician, as I like to say. And over the years, both as a lawyer and a legislator, I've learned from personal experience that the best way to pass laws that guarantee the rights of everyone is to get women seats at the decision-making table. Women's leadership is especially critical during times of political transitions, and in this regard, I'm delighted to be here this morning to welcome President Rosa, which means Rose. I thought maybe it meant red, but it, you check out her shoes. But it means Rose uh, Otonbaeva, the former president of the Kyrgyz Republic, to discuss exactly this topic. Uh, we are also joined in the audience to my left by the Kyrgyz ambassador to the uh, United States, um, Mukhtar Dumaliev, uh, as well as a number of other Wilson Center friends and colleagues. The Wilson Center, as most of you know, is the living memorial to our 28th president and celebrates Wilson's interests in aligning scholarship and policy. Uh, we offer what we call a safe political space uh, which is very necessary these days in this town, to research, debate, and develop actionable ideas uh, for the policy community. But a hundred years ago, uh, in Wilson's day, the issue of women's leadership was not on the world's agenda. In fact, Wilson initially opposed women's suffrage until his daughters finally persuaded him to support our 19th Amendment, which was ratified in 1920, just at the end of his second term. Today, women are the leaders, the current leaders, of 20 countries, and the Wilson Center's Global Women's Leadership Initiative, the newest initiative here at the Wilson Center, is committed to providing a platform for these women leaders and to supporting them at all stages of their career. Headed by Do Dr. Rangida De Silva de Alwis, uh, right there, our resident rock star, who is joining us, um, uh, on the, uh, who will moderate this conversation. The Global Women's Leadership Initiative connects women leading governments with emerging women leaders from around the world. Uh, President Otunbaeva joins a long list of women heads of state and government that the Wilson Center has worked with over the years. We've been honored to partner and support women leaders from around the world, from President Tarja Halonen of Finland to Prime Minister Yingluck Shinawatra of Thailand, the first woman to lead her country, to President Atifede Yayaga, the youngest woman president in the world. She's younger than one of my children. It's quite astonishing. I am proud of the work that we have done to support both current and emerging women leaders around the world and to provide them with the skills, platforms, and networks to reach the highest levels of political leadership. As an important leader in Central Asia, President Ontan Baeva knows the challenges and opportunities that women face in rising to the top positions of political power. Prior to assuming the presidency of her country in 2010, President Otunbaeva held a number of key positions of political leadership in her country, including foreign minister, deputy prime minister, uh, both positions she held until she became her country's first ambassador to the U.S. and, and then to Canada. I'm not sure in which order but it's pretty impressive, lots of senior positions. President Baeva was one of the key leaders of the Tulip Revolution in Kyrgyzstan in 2005 and then was tapped as interim president after the 2010 revolution. She held the country together through an extended period of ethnic and political tensions and led the constitutional referendum that transformed Kyrgyzstan into Central Asia's first parliamentary republic. Her commitment to women's leadership continued after she left office in 2011. She's now head of the initiative of Rosa Otunbaeva International Foundation, which supports, among other initiatives, the development of education, art, and culture, the support of women and youth, and the creation of multicultural development platforms. All of these initiatives are aimed at promoting and supporting the people of Kyrgyzstan. We look forward to her close engagement with our GWLI, and we are honored to have her at the Wilson Center today. Thank you, and please welcome uh, President Otunbaeva. I don't know. Are you going to? No, no, no. 
Oh, you're going to speak, and you're welcome to speak at this podium or. No, thank you. Yeah. What a pleasure to welcome you. Dear Congresswoman, thank you very much for such a warm uh, presentation of me. And uh, I was coming to this audience uh, full of people, and I admire how much you in America uh, want to learn every time. I, when I became ambassador to the United States, it was 92, 1992, we just opened our first embassy here in Washington, D.C. That was exciting time right after the collapse of the USSR. And all Americans want to know what uh, these countries are about, new countries. And uh, wherever I go, of, uh, I traveled uh, 15 states of the United States uh, in two years and uh, via this World uh, Affairs Council's uh, um, network. And uh, usually uh, of in Alaska or in Hawaii or in uh, other states, everywhere people gather together and uh, they want to see you, how Kyrgyz look and what they are about and uh, what they want and so on. And uh, I really uh, keep admire this because uh, I'm trying now as uh, a head of uh, uh, my foundation to put that sort of uh, work in Kyrgyzstan back uh, to my country, that uh, people will gather for special topics together. Kyrgyzstan is Asian country, and uh, unfortunately, we do not know much about Asia, about the surrounding countries. And uh, uh, per month, uh, ev uh, every month, uh, we uh, uh, um, gather uh, people together, uh, business people, uh, officials, and uh, um, I'm trying to introduce this uh, sort of Western form. They would uh, come for the lunch or for dinner, uh, pay uh, by the entrance. Uh, our parliamentarians are shocked that why they should pay. Their appearance is uh, something sort of present for us. Uh, uh, but uh, still we are keeping to teach them. This is, uh, this is something new and uh, it is uh, important uh, to get together, to learn about uh, a new uh, topic. So Kyrgyzstan, as you know, this is uh, one of the Central Asian countries. Uh, today we are 5.5 million population country. And uh, we have a border uh, uh, with China, 1,000 kilometers, with Kazakhstan, with Uzbekistan and Tajikistan. So I'm uh, very much involved with this uh, problem of early childhood. Uh, after a uh, uh, heavy crisis which we had and uh, transition time, which was uh, a very troubled transition time, I thought, uh, look, we should start somewhere. All of us, we are from the childhood. So th this is our base, this is our nest. and. Uh, um, all these uh, 20 years of our independence, uh, they've been uh, difficult, troubled years. Someone probably is very happy who is uh, uh, fortunate to have oil and gas. And uh, when I have visited this year Azerbaijan, I found that uh, they have 38 billion per, own, uh, per, per annum uh, volume of uh, export. Uh, it, it is $38 billion. And uh, of course, uh, this is such a fortune for, for, the, uh, for Azerbaijan. I went to uh, Turkmenistan. And uh, of course, uh, in 20 years, they built a totally new city, Ashgabat. And uh, Turkmenistan was le the last in caravan in the former Soviet Union. And today, if they really show up that uh, so uh, this is uh, something what they can accomplish uh, uh, construction city in uh, white um, marmor it, it is uh, impressive for us because my country uh, um, it's uh, better than uh, uh, for the, the soil is better than in Belarus. Uh, we uh, um, in my country, uh, all sorts of uh, vegetables and fruits can grow. This is central of Fergana Valley. Uh, it is uh, the area is uh, close to, uh, to Afghanistan, Pakistan, whatever. I mean, uh, plenty of fruits and vegetables and. Uh, there is a lot of uh, oil. Uh, 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 there is a lot of gold in my country also, 
um, where we generate money from the gold. We have uh, one uh, main our mining, uh, which is uh, uh, which consists 700 tons of gold, and so this is uh, uh, very known uh, of Kyrgyz uh, Canadian uh, uh, such um, uh, enterprise, and uh, it consists 10 percent of our budget, 40 percent of our uh, uh, industry. And uh, mm, we have other also gold uh, uh, places, and uh, price on gold goes on and on. And uh, we must be uh, also fortunate, uh, uh, as well as others who are rich of oil and gas. But 20 years we spent to learn uh, uh, market economy, how to do this uh, uh, market economy. It was uh, very difficult uh, um, years and difficult lessons to learn. Um, we, uh, the the uh, people's um, consistency and quality changed over these 20 years. We got uh, uh, so many people who migrated out of the country. I have found recently um, in the research of uh, IOM that um, uh, in uh, for 22 countries there are diaspora ministries. Uh, and so those countries, uh, uh, some of them like uh, of, uh, Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan, uh, for they have uh, uh, more than 20% of people uh, going abroad to work. And I found also the same uh, in my country. This is uh, uh, Kyrgyzstan and uh, 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 sorry, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan also. And forget about Philippines, forget about uh, Mexico, which are considered to be uh, such a countries which are uh, sort of migrant uh, from, uh, generated country so but uh, uh, by statistic today only t about 10 percent of those uh, f people from those countries go abroad in our countries more than 20 percent so it is a quite significant number of people uh, earning their uh, money uh, out of the country uh, in uh, my country, because of the uh, borders with China, this uh, thousand kilometer, strategic location is very good also, uh, that um, uh, we became a transit uh, country, hubs uh, uh, for the goods uh, coming from China and taken to Russia, to Kazakhstan, and we have two strategic, if you want, uh, markets, uh, which uh, are very important for the trade of the whole Central Asia as region. So uh, economically, everything is in place. And uh, um, uh, again, climate is there. Out of uh, 365 uh, days, 300 uh, days are sunny days. And uh, you can generate uh, alternative energy, not uh, just to be tied to uh, um, uh, conventional energy. Um, but uh, we need a lot of uh, investment to human resources. People should be uh, uh, trained, uh, sh should be educated, and uh, human resources, this is the most difficult for every developing country. Uh, out of 5.5 .5 million uh, children um, from zero to seven years, they are uh, about 800,000 children. So it's uh, quite a lot. And uh, uh, ch children in school from first grade up to 10 uh, class, uh, they are uh, about million. So uh, this is uh, um, quite a young country. And uh, we have uh, graduated from the Soviet Union with 98% of literacy. So much has been done, so much investment into education. But uh, as every country in the world, we uh, not just complain, we uh, feel that uh, um, such a deterioration of education is dramatic. Uh, dramatic because a lot of teachers, they left the schools, they can't earn their money. And uh, uh, 
uh, especially teachers of science. Um, I feel that uh, this is really um, uh, f such a damage uh, for the school education. And if we want to develop in the future mining and uh, hydropower uh, um, energy uh, industry, then uh, we should have a, a good, uh, uh, good teachers and uh, students, uh, engineers and geologists and, and and so on, related to those uh, um, uh, subjects. Uh, so uh, this is a big problem with the human resources. Today, governing the uh, human resources and uh, giving them proper education, this is a big problem. And uh, I'm very much involved with this early childhood and uh, working now very hard uh, to present one year, compulsory year, Preschooling education, right before the school, we should prepare children to start equal, uh, to have an equal start up to the school. Otherwise, we can't just uh, upgrade education in our countries. Uh, um, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, everywhere you would find uh, the same uh, um, quality of human resources. And um, the, uh, percent of, uh, ch uh, the percentage of children going to the kindergarten in my country, in rural areas, uh, it's about 5%. It's nothing. 14% uh, throughout the country. In the best our Soviet days, we 30% uh, of children used to go to kindergartens. So uh, I do realize that kindergartens is a mirror of economy. If you don't have economy, why you, you need uh, kindergartens? Uh, because uh, moms are at home, they are jobless, they should uh, take care of the children. So this is, uh, mm, uh, this is realistic. But at the same time, uh, in my country, when you have immigrants, so many migrants, when you have so many jobless people, uh, depressed in some way because of joblessness, then uh, this is, uh, uh, of course, a big problem to give uh, uh, touch to, uh, to these children, to prepare them to the school. And this, uh, we found that uh, this compulsory year, uh, year uh, in front of the school, this is uh, something, it's a solution for developing countries. And we want to start in my country that the whole region uh, also will be involved into such a, uh, action. Uh, this is uh, what uh, I do consider as uh, very important and uh, because I was um, given such introduction as a uh, crisis manager, really I was a crisis uh, manager uh, in the 2010. I, uh, before the 2010, I was a uh, leader of opposition in our parliament, uh, heading a social uh, of a democratic uh, faction in the parliament. Uh, we've been 11, uh, it's over to 79 of uh, uh, 72, sorry, 72 of uh, uh, the um, uh, sort of such a party which was uh, very much like in our part of the world, dominating party in the parliament. So they would uh, get instruction from the White House and what as uh, necessary to what and so that's it and uh, uh, business is done and uh, for nine of us we are struggling uh, for um, uh, try demanding uh, uh, for, uh, because radio of uh, the parliament uh, it is uh, white uh, um, uh, such a uh, white hurt in the whole country. Then uh, my voice was uh, uh, reaching uh, all corners, uh, and uh, whatever we said in the parliament, uh, it was uh, heard uh, in uh, from all three uh, corner, uh, corners. Uh, we've been not shown on TV as opposition, never, and uh, that was a very hard time. And uh, uh, Bakiev's uh, family, Bakiev's clan. Uh, uh, after the revolution 2005, we thought that uh, uh, we'll uh, at last uh, go to democracy, but uh, 
it was not a case. Uh, this family thought uh, uh, to enrich themselves in five years more than uh, uh, what Archive's family was enriching it, uh, themselves in 14 years. And uh, the son, uh, for it's happened to be a very able man, uh, young man, and uh, so for he has invited a group of uh, uh, consultants uh, from uh, uh, big capitals of the world and uh, started uh, to privatize what left uh, uh, in uh, in the country. And as you know, of, uh, with the former Soviet uh, uh, countries, what uh, it took for you 200 years uh, for privatization, it happens in our countries in 20 years. What belonged to the whole nation in 20 years, uh, it, be, uh, it started to belong to five, ten percent, and so all others uh, have been impoverished uh, uh, totally. Uh, that was uh, very, uh, that's why uh, we do uh, believe that uh, the um, uh, poverty, uh, the social economic situation uh, looks uh, very grim, uh, especially in our countries. Uh, so uh, Bakiev's family wants very much uh, to get uh, um, as much as uh, possible to, of uh, profit. And so they brought uh, such a law that in the case uh, that uh, President Bakif can't rule the country, then the third uh, of person, of, uh, you can read this is his son, he'll step in. And it was end of our uh, passions. And uh, we were uh, struggling, we are calling uh, people to oppose to such a violence of the law. And uh, all the opposition has united uh, under the uh, idea of parliamentary democracy, introducing parliamentary democracy to Kyrgyzstan. April 7, 2010, uh, uh, that was uh, the day when uh, we want uh, to conduct uh, such a uh, the day of uh, protests throughout the country. But when people came to the White House, uh, um, uh, 6th of April, uh, the leaders of uh, the opposition been arrested, all of them. Uh, people came to the uh, for, um, square in front of the White House and uh, they've been met with the shots uh, from the windows of the White House and uh, very strange. Uh, uh, 87 people died in front of uh, the White House, and uh, um, uh, that was, uh, uh, it didn't get such attention. Like later on in Tunisia, in uh, other countries, in Arab, uh, uh, from, uh, in, in Arab region. But uh, uh, Mr. Putin uh, pointed out that Arab Spring has started from Kyrgyzstan. So, this is uh, his uh, mm, uh, remark, and uh, uh, we uh, um, lost, we paid very high price for this change, and uh, um, the government of um, Bakiev uh, um, capitulated, uh, um, I would uh, use this word. Uh, we came, uh, we entered into the White House, and I have demanded from the Prime Minister, uh, uh, his Prime Minister, to write a letter of resignation and just just to go to leave the uh, the, the White House. So that night, um, the interim government took the power, and uh, out of uh, five six parties who united uh, under umbrella of opposition, all of them they. Uh, uh, asked me to become uh, the leader of uh, uh, interim government. Uh, we took the power and uh, started to issue decrees and uh, straight uh, we have, um, gave a promise that in half a year we would uh, conduct parliamentary elections and uh, in uh, 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 this, uh, October 10 we would have uh, presidential elections. Uh, looking back, uh, and uh, you had uh, also uh, in front of your eyes so many other stories in other countries, especially in Arab countries. Uh, uh, of course, we can tell you that it was very hard, but we've done everything what we have promised. We have conducted in half a year parliamentary elections. 
and our um, elections been recognized as ever clean, transparent, and the best elections by OEC, by European Union, by PASE delegations, uh, uh, observation delegations. So we've been very proud that we can do such uh, elections, absolutely free elections, uh, because uh, every time it was not elections, just cheating. And uh, these elections brought us opposition party f number one, first, um, the whole night uh, for uh, the results uh, coming to the screen, nobody was involved. In other times, uh, probably uh, from the presidential apparatus, someone will ask uh, to, uh, to, to correct, to make uh, favorable uh, to over to the ruling party, but uh, we didn't uh, touch at all. And so that, that's happened, that, that was the result. Um, we have conducted presidential elections and uh, um, president was elected. And uh, f December 1st of last year, I passed uh, the power peacefully to the president elected. Of course, that was the first uh, such a, um, action uh, for events uh, in our part of the world, uh, as you know. And uh, this is uh, something what we are very proud of. Uh, but before that, as you know, um, 27th of June 2010, uh, we had a referendum, a referendum to change the constitution. Our previous constitution just uh, became like rubbish, sorry to say this. Uh, seven times it was corrected in the sake of the authoritarianism. The president, uh, uh, every president, Akhayev, Bakiev, they want to get uh, more power, more power, and uh, of the constitution which uh, we have adopted in 1993, it was just, uh, we got uh, um, something uh, on the constitution. So in, uh, uh, 20, on 27th of June, uh, we have conducted a referendum. And for the first time, in our region, we have introduced this parliamentary uh, governance uh, uh, political system. It is, uh, it is very hard uh, for, to live under democracy. It is very difficult, chaotic, uh, uh, messy. Uh, today we are going through parliamentary democracy and people are unhappy also that, look, uh, these five uh, factions which our parliament consists today, uh, they uh, f can uh, make uh, uh, all sorts of uh, such a uh, uh, design, let's say. So uh, one day he's in opposition, in uh, half a year or in a year time he's in uh, proposition, let's say. So what a mess. As soon as he come to the uh, coalition, to the governing coalition, they build the governments, and we had once a change of the prime minister, and uh, people bring their people to the power, and it's, it looks very messy. I was recently in the OEC talking to Mr. Zanier, Secretary General of the OEC, and I told him that, look, uh, why not uh, the Western countries with a uh, mature parliamentary system? They would share experience with us. We are like in desert, one only parliamentary country in this part of the world. Back as, of course, there is a Mongolia. Uh, today, thanks God, we have a direct flight from Bishkek to uh, Ulaanbaatar. It's three and a half hours, uh, Turkish Airlines flies, and we want uh, to get closer uh, to um, Ulaanbaatar uh, and uh, to Mongolian experience also. Uh, next year, uh, Georgia will turn to uh, democracy, parliamentary democracy, and there is uh, up uh, Moldova. So only those countries, this chain is uh, uh, with the parliamentary democracy. Certainly, we uh, will be more than happy if Russia, Ukraine will join to share uh, their view and experience. Not everyone thinks they're just an authoritarian way. So this is uh, something what I am uh, uh, very much full of. I, I think about this uh, every time, every day, because uh, uh, well, this is what we have chosen. Uh, that came to us with very high price. And we should now conduct, learn, and live in this parliamentarism. 
And uh, if someone has a better experience, they should share with us. Because uh, you see, parliamentarism, this is experience of Western countries. And it is uh, in the books, in memoirs of the politician. It is in the protocols of the parliament, and so on and so on. But we do not have books. We do not have literature on parliamentarism in our part of the world. Uh, it, it never uh, took place, uh, parliamentarism. So it is uh, quite a complicated uh, system. Uh, it's not easy uh, system. Uh, in Canada or in Netherlands even, uh, not a, a majority coalition governs, but minority also. It's awkward for us. Uh, we think that just the majority should uh, uh, govern uh, in uh, the parliament, but uh, they have also such experience. So anyway, uh, this is what uh, we think about. And uh, I must tell you that, uh, again, my experience was a very hard experience. One and a half years I was on the helm, uh, governing all the uh, big guys, very ambitious guys. Uh, <laughs> They, uh, f they couldn't come uh, together. Uh, uh, be, uh, everyone wants to be uh, on the helm, wants to be number one. And uh, I brought them in this very difficult time. Uh, all of them have uh, been, uh, uh, because probably I'm older, <laughs> I don't know, because, uh, uh, because really. Um, uh, <laughs> because uh, I, I, w I had a, a bit uh, international experience and uh, when uh, it's happened uh, so uh, in uh, uh, in such a remote country, uh, nobody in the world understands who came to the power, what kind of coup d'état uh, took place there, and so, so I uh, I became uh, 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 head of state starting 27 of June, from 10 uh, um, uh, uh, from April 10 until 27 of June, nobody recognized us. Nobody wants uh, to uh, include us to the uh, for, um, venues of our strategic alliances. So uh, we had a um, summit of uh, SHOS, Shanghai Organization. We had a summit of uh, CIS. They just excluded us. We, we didn't exist for them. So, for, and so that was a very hard time. And so only starting 27 of June, I was only person, uh, sort of uh, in law and uh, uh, for, no based on law. And so then um, I uh, I got a duty uh, to conduct uh, parliamentary elections to build parliament, later on uh, to conduct presidential elections, and uh, th that's how we built uh, from the scratch uh, new bodies. Uh, and we have started uh, uh, from court uh, um, reform of the uh, court system in my country. It, it's going on still. And so uh, we just recently had elections uh, in uh, 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 of local governments uh, uh, based on the majoritarian uh, uh, so, sorry proportional base so so our democracy is moving on it is uh, very difficult but it's moving on and on i must tell you i relied very much on women and uh, it is because uh, country came to this uh, situation because of ongoing corruption. Uh, more than 60%, about 70% of our economy is gray economy still. Uh, it's, it's difficult. Uh, it is uh, really, uh, you, ca you don't have uh, one remedy to uh, sort out all this, uh, um, to make it transparent, your ec economy. So, and uh, mm, I put forward uh, to the consideration of the parliament uh, prosecutor general women, uh, chairwomen of the Supreme Court, uh, women as head of the of, um, National Bank, and all of them been approved by the parliament. They are still on their position. They are working. One uh, prosecutor general looks after the uh, justice and law. Uh, National Bank after the commercial banks because uh, banks became such a laundry of um, uh, uh, laundry uh, robots uh, for Bakif's family. So 
and uh, we, we had a lot of problems, almost collapse of uh, commercial uh, banks of some of them. So this is uh, these women; they are like guards in this uh, in every of this system. Recently, President has appointed uh, women as uh, um, chair of the accounting chamber uh, in uh, my country. And so we have Minister of Finance women in Kyrgyzstan. We have Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Health. 23% of uh, the parliament are women in my country. Uh, they came by quota, and it is essential for us to have a quota at this stage. And don't forget, this is an uh, Asian country with Asian background, and uh, very close our neighbor is Afghanistan, and uh, uh, China uh, with the uh, Xinjiang Uyghur region. So we have totally different background, and it is not easy. It is a very challenging area. And uh, people still ask uh, how it uh, became that uh, women was uh, in transition uh, on the top and uh, how these guys listen to you and so on and so on. Look, that was no choice for them, no choice for, for all of us. It was a critical moment. We were uh, supposed to go through a very, very difficult, uh, um, uh, uh, on very difficult uh, course. And, uh, um, I think uh, women are uh, very important in such a time of conflict, uh, healing, bringing uh, all of the uh, conflicti uh, conflicting sides together, uh, uh, comforting people because uh, um, uh, 87 people died in front of the White House, I, I told you. And so their parents have been uh, for demanding uh, and calling uh, for the assistance and uh, uh, a lot of um, uh, pain we had with them. Then uh, I must uh, especially tell you that uh, um, 10th of June, it's happened tragedy in the south of my country. Uh, in Fergana Valley, Nosh Oblast, in Jalalabad Oblast, uh, uh, conflict uh, took place between Kyrgyz and Uzbek communities. Uh, sort of uh, um, unavoidable in some way, because uh, 20 years ago we had such a crisis. Tensions been uh, quite high. And so I must tell you, it is, uh, it's, it's not happened uh, very um, uh, suddenly. No, it was uh, really, of the, of these tensions been there in place. Uh, International Crisis Group was based uh, in such a hot spot like Osh City for 15 years. OEC was monitoring the situation, and everyone will tell you that situation was very hot. But they used this uh, of conflicting sides. Anyone uh, who would be uh, um, the reason of this uh, conflict, they used the situation, this uh, very, very um, uh, such a crisis time. And uh, uh, as uh, president, I took a decision for international inquiry to come. This is ever first such international inquiry which was done in the territory of the former Soviet Union. And uh, pressure has been very ha hard. Uh, people uh, in my country uh, nationalistically uh, oriented. They said, no, no way. Why they, they should come foreigners and uh, make uh, such an uh, evaluation? Uzbeks are guilty and full stop. Uh, but uh, I uh, have decided that uh, we need this uh, international inquiry. <laughs> And uh, s uh, nine people uh, from, uh, from uh, very, very renowned uh, um, such uh, experts, they came and they've done this uh, investigation. I took uh, very, uh, sometimes uh, looking back, uh, I do realize that I took uh, quite uh, um, uh, difficult decisions, but uh, it's not a heroism. Someone should took this decision. That was time that uh, you should take the responsibility. Nobody else will do that. Uh, once uh, of, uh, uh, after s April 7, uh, it was in 2010, uh, April, t uh, no, May, May, it was uh, May, I guess. Uh, you had in Washington non-proliferation conference here, big conference. And uh, Nazarbayev gave a call to me and he said, look, um, 
Bakif is in the south and uh, he's trying to uh, make a, a situation uh, even worse and it's better for you to let him go out of the country. And uh, we have decided, three of us, we, uh, we had a sort of uh, talk between us, Mr. Obama, myself, and Mr. Medvedev, and it's better for you uh, to let him go. I asked my uh, interim government uh, uh, fellows that, uh, look, uh, there is a, such a call, and uh, what do you think, what, uh, what we should do? Uh, everyone just uh, for, uh, left of this venue and they said, no, I, I don't have any deal with that and I don't like to take any decision and so on. So that was the case. Uh, for, uh, I, I do realize why. Now still people asking, who let go Mr. Bakiev? He should uh, take responsibility and so on. Bakiev is uh, now in Belarus, as you know, and uh, he was taken, uh, and I gave uh, my agreement. Uh, I said, uh, yes, uh, take him away. And uh, he, he left with his uh, family. He's now in Belarus. And uh, unfortunately, this is awkward, but Mr. Lukashenko was uh, asking recently his pension to, uh, <laughs> that uh, he, he takes uh, such a care of uh, Bakiev that, uh, look, uh, they, they forgot that uh, there is a pension of Bakiev. Why not to let him send uh, to Belarus, to Minsk, where he lives now? So this is uh, the situation. Anyway, uh, for, uh, that was uh, one of uh, such a very um, dramatic uh, events uh, um, uh, over the course of this uh, time. Uh, I, uh, uh, I must tell about many other things. Uh, on the day of uh, um, 10 of uh, uh, June, when uh, uh, we had, a, uh, again, dramatic uh, results of these uh, tensions between Kyrgyz and Uzbek uh, population, more than 400 people died. Uh, we couldn't stop. Three days, uh, people struggling and uh, killing each other. Uh, that was full tragedy, of course, uh, in the South. And uh, I was calling to Mr. Uh, Karimov and uh, to Mr. Medvedev, uh, Putin, uh, how to sort out the situation that someone should come and uh, help us and so on. This is uh, probably now history and uh, I should sit one day and write about this. Uh, so, but uh, that, uh, those days been critical for Kyrgyzstan. We have overcome uh, this time. We are now uh, of um, such a uh, fragile still parliamentary country uh, with uh, all the uh, problems of development. Uh, but uh, I must tell you, uh, we are a free country with the same values like uh, the whole civilized world. Uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, NGOs in my country, women lead NGOs. We have freedom of speech. And uh, Freedom House put us uh, down, down. I don't know what is then free, uh, f freedom of speech. I don't understand because in my country there is uh, such a freedom of uh, speech. And uh, uh, as uh, who knows, Kyrgyzstan, uh, you can imagine how to compare them to in other countries in Central Asia. So this is uh, of what we are very proud of. We have um, uh, young generation, uh, they, uh, they are very brave, committed to democracy. In Bishkek, uh, we have American Central Asian University, where a lot of students from Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, Afghanistan come to study. We want to have more of them. We have Academy of the OEC uh, for master's degree. A lot of people from around the world, they come to do their master's degree also uh, to learn about Central Asia. Uh, so uh, I think uh, from, we are doing uh, of, um, as we are doing. Of. This is uh, not an easy stage of our development, uh, but I'm sure that we are on the right track. I think I must stop and see if uh, any question. Thank you. Your Excellency, President Otambaeva, the first woman head of a Central Asian country, and the president of the Wilson Center, who is the first woman to head the Wilson Center, and the Wilson Center guests, welcome. 
As transformations sweep the Middle East and North African region, President Otambawea, you have offered words of wisdom that can guide this region to a peaceful transition that you guided your country to. Uh, President Otambawewa, you are a philosopher, a diplomat, a negotiator, a bridge builder, a healer, and a broker of compromise, and a leader who is also a woman. Your detractors have accused you of governing like a woman. And we cannot think of a greater badge of honor. As Central Asia's first and only woman leader in the region, you're very consciously a woman leader. And you have said that you want your leadership to have a positive impetus for thousands and thousands of women to be in the forefront of all of their nations. Those are your words. You have also said that all people have the inalienable right to freedom. And on that note, I want to remind you of some of your words, because those words that you have shared with your peers in the Middle East and North African region resonate throughout and are very critical to the changes sweeping the North African and Middle Eastern region. You have said nothing can be more important and more moving than humans celebrating their freedom. There are many skeptics and cynics, you said, who warn against popular revolutions, citing the violence and instability that they unleash and the unpredictable consequences. And to those critics, you responded very clearly, we are humans, we are irrational, but that is simply part of our nature. But, you have said, having paid such a high price, we cannot squander the historic opportunity we have to right past wrongs and to build a better state and a more just society. And our experience tells us that there is no highway to democracy. In fact, you have said that democracy is the only way. So I would like to open the floor for questions by asking you to share with you some advice on how women cannot squander this opportunity, this golden opportunity that they have in the Middle East and North African regions in advancing women's leadership in not just in Kyrgyzstan, as you so ably showed, that women, as the first woman in the history of our world, has seen through her country through a peaceful transition that women in the Middle East and North African region can also seize that mantle of change, seize that mantle of leadership. So what are your words of advice to your peers, your sisters in that part of the world? Can I respond to you? No, very difficult question. Uh, by the way, uh, from, uh, Regardless what Mr. Putin said uh, about uh, the opening of uh, Arab Spring uh, era in uh, of that part of the world, uh, uh, I do believe that every country has uh, own specific and own problems. And uh, um, uh, in my country, women been uh, uh, in front of the line of struggle, and uh, that's what we do see also in uh, Arab countries. Uh, um, women been uh, very active uh, um, in uh, uh, to promote democracy. Uh, most of the women uh, NGOs are led uh, by women. Uh, a lot of uh, new, uh, f uh, um, a lot of press is led by women in my country. And um, uh, women encourage very much uh, men. And uh, uh, I think um, uh, I never forget a remark of one uh, woman from Africa uh, at one uh, women conference. Uh, she said, uh, why uh, women are uh, silent when uh, uh, corruptionists of their husbands, uh, they bring something uh, uh, additional plus uh, to home, and they are in silence. Uh, so women can do 
publicly and at home many things to stop uh, uh, s uh, such a uh, deterioration and uh, um, uh, erosion of the society. And uh, I, I do believe that uh, uh, in Kyrg uh, Kyrgyzstan's case uh, might be a, um, such a um, what a good example for the Arab uh, uh, countries uh, that um, uh, first of all, uh, I do believe in education. Education is uh, vital, and uh, uh, I think um, in in all our developing countries, we should pay a lot of attention. Women are educators by nature, so, and uh, for this will be uh, my advice. Thank you. Thank you, President. You have also said that pluralism is not just an asset, but it's a prerequisite for progress and vital for development. Questions from our guests? Yes, mm -hmm. Max. Um, thank you so much, Your Excellency. Uh, I'm Manaz Akhtiani from Women's Learning Partnership. We're proud mm -hmm. to have a very active uh, group in Kyrgyzstan mm -hmm. uh, headed uh, thank you. Uh, headed by uh, Tolikan Ismailova, uh, working with us. My question is, uh, some of the f our partners in the MENA region are facing the resurgence of religious ideology in a conservative way, which uh, actually has at the center of its activity reducing the meager rights that women have achieved over the years in these countries. Now, in uh, the case of Kyrgyzstan and Central Asia, having come after Soviet uh, dominance and uh, problems with religious expression, is there such a problem also there, or, or are you just uh, uh, fighting with regular run-of-the-mill secular patriarchy, or does the religious cultural element have uh, a right in, in it as well? Thank you. Uh, it is complicated question. Uh, you are dealing with uh, uh, the uh, atheists in the past, and uh, uh, let's say in the best time agnostic today, and uh, it is uh, for, um, uh, sort of my feeling to growing uh, Islamization is uh, not a positive, uh, and so we have, um, as a matter of fact, uh, growing uh, Islamization. Uh, and so it's not just a traditional uh, Islam, uh, which uh, Sunni type of Islam, which we practice, but all sorts of uh, Hezbollah, Tahrir, Wahhabism, all of them, they are prohibited in my country, but uh, they are very active uh, also. And uh, uh, we consider that uh, um, Wahhabism, uh, Hezbollah, Tahrir, Ahmadis, they are uh, uh, sections um, under, uh, um, uh, under veto, let's say. Uh, so. And uh, of, uh, the same with Christianity, quite aggressive uh, influx of Christian religions also. Uh, last of uh, this June 2010 even, I, uh, I've, uh, for, um, I was told that uh, Scientologists also in, in, in force, uh, they came with their uh, social package and uh, I think it's uh, really a, very risky for, uh, for, for our region. But uh, because of Afghanistan, because of Pakistan closeness to us, uh, this uh, religious uh, of, um, uh, uh, group uh, as uh, of Hezbollah Tahrir uh, and Wahhabism are active. Uh, and they are trying to spread around uh, for their wings and uh, uh, trying to influence uh, young people and uh, women. And when I'm talking about the kindergartens, I'm struggling to keep all our kids out of this influence because they're also fighting for uh, early childhood. They want to open their kindergartens. Uh, I uh, do conduct, for example, every year such a, a competition on declamation uh, of, uh, of poems. Uh, mostly it is in Russian. Now we want to include English and Kyrgyz also. Uh, but they have declamation of Quran. I'm struggling with them. Mm -hmm. uh, for, sorry to say this, but uh, uh, at every corner, at every such a field, uh, we, we have a 
quite a lot of uh, such uh, activity and uh, um, concurrence. Uh, um, I must tell you, uh, for, uh, because of the poverty, because of the social economical situation, uh, people uh, um, go under this influence. They didn't uh, stop to drink vodka less mm -hmm. as, uh, as, as Islam promised uh, mm -hmm. to do. They, they thought that they will uh, embrace uh, more uh, people and uh, they will drink less. No, uh, it, is, uh, it is not the case, unfortunately. So, and so with this regard, uh, what is the reason why they should uh, go to uh, uh, under such a of, uh, negative influence? So, I mean, uh, in our part of the world, uh, I must tell you, probably I'm wrong. I have a wrong head. I, I have uh, really a sort of still atheistic direction in my head. But uh, I don't see any, pro any progress uh, to be under such a... Uh, uh, influence of these uh, religions. Mm -hmm. But freedom of religion is there and uh, you can uh, go uh, under any uh, church and mm -hmm. uh, religion. And you have also said that the Holy Quran appeals to people living during difficult tests to general tolerance and forgiveness of the past offenses of each other. So you marshal the nobility and the essence of um, the Quran. We, can, we have time for one more question because the president has to leave at 10.30. Uh, yes, <laughs> the director of the Kennan Institute has presidents. Yes. Um, provisional governments, especially in this part of the world, do not have a great track record of actually succeeding and getting to a point to transfer power peacefully. I just thought if, if you could explain in more detail why you think your inter interim government succeeded where so many others have failed. You give me today very difficult questions. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a response, but, uh, but I must tell you, for, um, we are proud that we have succeeded. Uh, it was not easy. And uh, again, uh, for we've been uh, probably led by God so that uh, uh, we, um, uh, we, uh, we've been determined, very much determined. And uh, we thought that uh, we should really get out from corruption, from dictature, from uh, such a um, uh, sort of dark governance and uh, uh, from clan governance and so on. And uh, uh, quite a progressive group. And uh, uh, in, in the development of uh, new countries, you should have a vision. And still, uh, when uh, we are uh, crumbling and uh, someone says that, look, parliamentarism is rubbish. What is what you brought to us? Why it is uh, in place and so on? We do believe that uh, we should keep going. And uh, when I refer to the Central Eastern European countries, you see, uh, in the 90s, in Poland, uh, they used to have a every year change of the government. Now they fix uh, uh, once in five years. So uh, we do believe that we'll come to this point. But it's very hard uh, to, uh, uh, to feel on your skin this. Uh, you want success immediately, straight, now, and without any uh, such a... Uh, uh, problem. So uh, for, uh, when we've been in uh, interim governments, we had a, uh, this uh, um, uh, 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 what is uh, 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 this uh, deadlines? Yeah, deadlines for 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 the uh, election and so on. Uh, I had a problem after 10 of June when uh, clashes took place in the south. Conduct or not on 27 the referendum, and a lot of uh, uh, guesses been that it is not right, morally not right. People died, and why you should now have a referendum? And uh, that was a very hard decision, but we went for this uh, decision. I mean, uh, probably it is a women's intuition also. I, I. I thought we should go, we should go and we should conduct, it will be better. And it was a very hard decision because we had a Uzbek people who left to Uzbekistan, 70,000 people. And I made a call to Mr. Karimov that uh, how to organize uh, uh, elections uh, there. 
So, I mean, uh, it was, everything was difficult, but uh, we have conducted. Anyway, what I'm trying to tell you, you are going of, uh, so, um, as sharp, and uh, you should take a right decision. And uh, when I, you are succeeded, you are sure that you are on the right way. You go for the next. And I had a, such a very difficult road, and I thought uh, I should lead the nation from one place to another. And uh, we've done this, and uh, I passed over the power to the more or less stable country, in, in the more or less stable country. So, I mean, uh, uh, our situation was uh, a happy, happy situation, sorry to say this. Thank you, Your Excellency. The Global Women's Leadership Initiative is the premier platform that connects emerging women leaders to women leaders who lead their nations and their governments. It is unparalleled in its scope and its reach and the platform that it offers to amplify women's voices around the world. We want to thank you, President Otambaweva, for championing our cause. The core mission of the Global Women's Leadership Initiative is to accelerate women's leadership and decision making at every levels of public service to ensure that women represent equally with their male peers at every decision making processes in their governments at least by 2050. And President Otambaeva, we are proud to herald you as our champion of the cause of 50 by 50. And we are proud to recognize you as our leading ambassador for the Global Women's Leadership Initiative. On behalf of the Global Women's Leadership Initiative and the women of the world, we thank you for leading by example. Thank you very much, President. <laughs>